All right, I, I've come up with a, uh, come up with, well, I, I've been, I've been, I've been watching a lot of dry hopper videos here lately, and, uh, I, and, and I have a problem because this is, this is the hooks that I like to use, and then this is the other one. We're gonna need some, some orange thin white foam, some super glue, and uh, some zonker strips. Um, the problem that I'm having is uh, my my son and my friends they like to indicator fish with a with a uh, marabou fly underneath, kind of like nymph fishing, and they like to use these indicators. Now I know that throughout time a lot of people like to do the uh, the hopper dropper setups and and that that's fun but you know here where I fish at in Texas on the Brazos there's just absolutely here's the the hopper dropper that I've that I've tied and I usually use it, I mean it it works uh, it works, but you know, it, it, it's a grasshopper. And my favorite fishing in the world is mouse fishing. I, I love to fish mice. Uh, a, a mice explosion is probably one of the best things that I've ever fished. It, it is what got me addicted to fly fishing, and it is what I love to do the most. So I cut about an inch piece of foam like that. And if you want to get technical, everybody always does it. It's two times the hook gap. And then I like to put some super glue down. And then after I put the super glue down, I get an old piece of scrap phone I got laying around on the deal. And I, I spread it out. I spread it out like so. And then I like to turn that two millimeter foam over. And I like to double it over and then smash it down. That way you got a double thick piece of foam there. Just cause my, uh, I use three and a three uh, 3.2 millimeter or 3.5 millimeter tungsten beads underneath here and it's quite heavy so I just want to make sure that it's up high enough the next thing I'm going to do is I like to get these cheap Arbidim hooks it's the cheapest way that I figured out how to do this but I like to hang it off the back a little bit so I'll take it about that far I get a pair of pliers You just bend it back and forth like that, and it'll snap right off. Now, you have a piece sticking out the back like so. To be able to tie this on, I like to use my deer uh, hair string. It's the Beavis 200D. Uh, this is why this is why I spin deer hair with and, and pack deer hair with. It's it's the strongest thing that I've ever seen. And that's what I like to use the most uh, with it. But you go ahead and put that on there. Put your little bit of super glue so it adheres to that hook. Yes, it's I use an excessive amount of super glue on this because the last thing you want to do is to get a big old fish on there and have it pull out. I like to turn the I like to turn it perpendicular like that, and then I go in here. And I tie it right on top of the other hook shank. And then you tighten it down real, real good. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on that because I like to, I'm going to end up gluing a tail on here. So I like to put a little thread wrap on that part of the shank. So
the glue will stick to it. And there, that looks great. I'm gonna whip that off. I just don't like to tie with this thread. I don't like to tie with that thread if I don't have to. It's too, it's too nice. Then I'm gonna switch over to, um, it's 210 denier, my favorite bobbin. If anybody knows what where this, what kind of bobbin this is, I got it out of a uh, an old fly tires vintage, uh, an old fly tires box. But man, that that that's my. I, I've tried to buy more of them, and that's just my absolute favorite. So I'll go in here and tie that string down on there. I like to get me a, a little bit of a, a zonker strip. And then you get about a thumb's length. I like to I like to cut it to a point on the tip of the tail. And then I like to pull the hair back and then trim it up. Like so. And then I'll put a little bit of super glue where I'm gonna tie that tail in at. Just makes it bulletproof. Bass are pretty vicious here. And then tie that in. That tail make it nice and secure. And then you see how the glue stuck that down onto the shank coming out so it's like that it's beautiful after we do that I like to put a little bit more super glue on there yes I love some super glue and then I take my foam piece that I just tied I'm gonna bring it back here to the back pinch it over I want this thing to ride high because overall overall it is your indicator so we got to make this as buoyant as that. Once you get that put on there, I'm bringing my zonker strip. Yeah, I like a little super glue. A little bit on top. Tie that in back here. Probably if you want to see it, it's right at the hook point. Tie that in good, bring your hook your thread to the front and then Palmer Palmer your zonker strip around Takes a little bit to get that caught. I like to go ahead and put a couple of good thread wraps right there. After we do that, yep, I'm gonna drop a little more super glue on it. Then you're gonna split the hair. You can see how I split that. And you're gonna split that hair. You're gonna fold this over. You're going to catch it one time, get a nice little pull, catch it again, nice little pull. I'm going to drop a little glue there. I'm going to fold this back, catch them together. I like to cut this off close, cut a V in it, like so. Strip it down the middle for some mouse ears. And then I um, can't see very well, so I like to get a little bit of I like to get a little bit of pearl ice dub. And then 
spin it in your fingers. Put you another little drop of glue. Get you a wrap in there real deep so your, your thread sticks. Pull that through. Pull it back. Get you a whip finish. And that, my friends, is a, instead of a, a dry hopper, that is a mouse fly. With a place to tie your dropper onto the back. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you like it or not. Like always, tie your own Texas Country Fly Fisher.